Thank you, sir. I, uh, I started with saying that uh, gurus is not your singer. Eh? Yes, unfortunately, gurus have become such monsters on this planet today. And you guys who have had everything, still have everything you can reasonably ask for, created a market for those people. And they are exploiting all the people here in the Western countries, particularly in America, telling them that they have answers for all their problems which they are facing today. You see, it is very natural for somebody to ask a question when you have everything that you can reasonably ask for and you have everything that you can reasonably ask for. The question arises, is that all? The moment that question springs up inside of you and you throw it at others, you have created a market for them all. You see, I always maintain and uh, insist on repeating time and again that what has not helped those countries like India and other Asiatic countries is not going to help anybody in the world. You're implying you say India has, has known gurus for thousands of for years? thousands of years. If India is what it is today, it is not something that the Indians can be proud of. This is what I tell them also. Recently I was on uh, their television. India has no future in the sense that you are not in a position to control the events of this world or to shape in any way, directly or indirectly, the shaping of events in the world today. We are living in a very, very uh, difficult times today. The future, nobody can predict. Nobody can say with certainty where we are all going to end up. So, although they have one billion people in that country, they are in a position to assert and see that they play a very major role in the affairs of the world. So yeah, well, the only thing that they are exploiting around the globe is the demand for some spiritual shit, I would call it, that they are selling mm -hmm. in the marketplace, assuring the people that they have uh, the solutions for their day-to-day -day problems. But UG, I was in India recently at the Kumbh Mela, and I yeah. saw there's two things that the India, uh, Indian people have. And one of them is they make software, and wherever you go in the big cities, there's, yes, yes. They, they export software. And they export this spiritual Hinduism, Buddhism uh, the thing. Software uh, is acceptable to me because America is in a, a condition or situation or in a position where they have to depend upon, you see, the Indians. 80% of the people working there in the United States and software are from India. So why America has not been able to produce... Uh, the guys to handle their problems, you see. Sometimes even I go one step further and tell them, you see, you are in a position to be a hacker and break into all the secrets that they have in their defense department and see that America understands its present position in the world and not play the game of destroying the whole world. Do I'm you sorry. feel that that's what's happening? That that's America what is going to happen, you see. When you are in a position to destroy the maximum power with minimum means, you will all sing a different song. I have been everywhere in the world. I have spent more than 60 years in Switzerland. I have been coming to this country for almost uh, half a century. I came here first time at the very beginning of 50s. I was involved with the Theosophical Society. I was an international lecturer. I was invited to give lectures here and I gave a lecture there in Huizen. Uh, the then headquarters of uh, the, all the European federations. So I have known the West. I have spent most of my life in America, in Switzerland, and uh, in India. And I have been everywhere in the world. You see, the human nature is exactly the same. I went even to Russia and said some very nice things which they didn't like. And they thought that I was a CIA agent there. And in America, they thought that I was a KGB agent because I blasted America, you see. And I blasted Russia. And uh, I don't know what the Indians think uh, about me or of me. They don't like me anyway. Because what I say is not acceptable to the Indians. I have always maintained that the great heritage of India, which they are so proud of, the heritage that they are trying to sell, the shoddy piece of goods abroad, was born out of acid heads. It was born out of acid, acid heads? Acid heads. 
All those sages lived in the ah, jungles. Well, now it's getting interesting. You mean that the Vedas, all of them. and the Vedas was only written down, Afterwards. came out of people that out in the woods were taking digitales and so much juice, so much juice, and experienced some strange experiences and translated them into spiritual experiences and passed on that from generation to generation. We, in our turn, used those techniques through the help of thought created those experiences and believed that we are in the same state that those people were talking about. Wait a moment. So you're <laughs> basically saying that the psychedelic experience is, is the, the basis of the religion? Is the religion. It started that way in India. Okay. Well, then I have to ask you, have you taken I psychedelics? I have never taken. Anybody who has not smoked will never condemn others smoking. Anybody who has not even tasted or smelled say, alcohol will never ask people not to drink. Anybody who has not uh, taken drugs will not condemn drugs. You see, but at the same time, I do not encourage that. I do not. I maintain even today. I insist that drugs should be legalized. Then you see, you will be surprised. You see, it will fall in its proper place. Would you, know, you say that drugs in India have fallen into their proper place in the past, not in now? In the past, you see, in the past, you see. Because uh, when I see there, there is uh, people smoking uh, Ganga, there is uh, people taking uh, all kinds of leaves. and Yes. Nothing else. That, yeah. is, that is no different from any spiritual experience. But so experience. What, what do you think that happens in the mind when people take this psychedelic... They, they experience extraordinary, quote-unquote, uh, similar to spiritual experiences, uh, bliss, beatitude, immensity and love. And the feeling of unity. The feeling of unity. And you experience the same things when you take drugs. I have known a fellow, the fellow who has written my biography, Mr. Mahesh Bhatt. He was one of the top movie directors. And uh, he has written my biography. And he was not exposed to the religious background at all. First time when he took drugs, he experienced all the spiritual experiences, all the sages, saints and saviors of mankind in the past and present and yet to be born, they are going to experience the same thing. He talked about it in such an extraordinary way. So there is nothing marvelous about it. The moment you legalize that, it will fall in its proper place. The governments are involved in making money. Mm. The other day they said $92 billion dollars. Made by and the why you put all these young people into prison and destroy them? You see, meditation is one of the worst techniques that people are preaching. Okay, this is not a, a strong statement. You say meditation, is the which is preached by, by the Buddhists and the Hinduists. Nobody, and, the, nobody, and you say it doesn't serve Nobody any has done seriously meditation. This is what I point out to the people. If you have meditated very seriously for longer periods than they claim that they have done, they will either end up in the loony bins, singing loony tunes and merry melodies, or commit suicide, <laughs> jump into the river. Many of those sages in India who practiced yoga, who practiced uh, uh, meditation techniques, they all committed suicide and they called that jalasamadhi. See, those people, if they jump into the river and commit suicide... Yeah, it's like they want to be one with God and that's it. That's yeah. all. That's the way they interpret that and make yeah. them feel good the followers of those countries but that's for instance is a subject you know this this, this the suicide to join the godhead which happens in the christian ch churches too and it's never talked about but do you want me to say some nasty statements about your jesus uh, absolutely he <laughs> was smoking hash not hash but eating mushrooms for 40 days and 40 nights sitting there in the desert yeah but that he was clear and then he experienced the devil like anybody would do who takes no but one thing you don't realize if it remained in that small limited uh, scale and limited sphere of human activities it would have been finished long time ago through the help of uh, using that as an instrument of power the states are responsible for that buddhism would have remained a very small cult you see if it were not for the fact that ashoka one of the great emperors of India, yeah, the, the guy who used it pillars, as yeah. an instrument of power. Both Christianity, Islam and Buddhism have become the instruments of power. This is what I tell very often to so the people. So they be have become the banner for worldly powers, yeah. but claiming they, they were a yes, spiritual movement. Exactly. Movements. At that time, the religious uh, okay. uh, but, thing what, what, was the only instrument we had. Now you have political ideologies. Why you killed so many hundreds and thousands of people... Uh, and cows preaching you know preaching 
Love thy neighbor as thyself. How many men, women and children have been killed? And all the political ideologies you enforce on the world only through the instrument of power and violence. Even so I told can we Gandhi, do something about it? even when I met Gandhi, I yeah. told him, more people have been killed in the name of non-violence than violence. He himself admitted when his movements ended up in violence and killing of so many mm. men, women and children. You see, he admitted and announced to the wide world that he committed a Himalayan blunder. But a few months after, he started another organization, another movement and killed so many people. When I pointed out that uh, he didn't quite understand what I meant when I said both violence and non-violence spring from the same source. Of course, Indians had no weapons to fight the British Empire at that time. So that was the instrument of a, uh, an impotent man who had no power to challenge the power that was entrenched there. So you say that comes from the, ba the same basic instinct, which is like the, the, the lust for influence. Yes, influence. It is all essential activity, the varieties of food. Why the hell people eat so many varieties of food? So You see, I tell the doctors, I have lived 84 years. I'll be entering my 84th year. People want to think that until you complete 83rd year, you tell yourself, and if somebody asked you, how old are you, you would say 83. In India, they say the moment you enter your 84th year, they say yeah. we are pushing 84. In China, they add one more year. The moment you enter your 84th year, they say I'm 85 years old. It all depends upon what exactly you feel about your aging process. You understand? But so, so what would that mean that we could overcome the problems of, of aging? No, you're not going to succeed. You know they have started clinics in the United States of America to stop the aging process of dogs. They have become so important. We have ruined all of them by allowing uh, ourselves to be associated with the animals. The emphasis that I'm emphasizing with great, uh, what is the right word, I, I don't know, emphasis all the time is that we are no different from any other species on this planet. The human beings are no more important than the mosquito that is biting you because the only female mosquitoes bite you for the reason that they need your hemoglobin to maintain the continuity yeah, so, of the So they're part of the system. That is part of the system. But we have been brainwashed to believe that, that we are created for some nobler and grander purpose than all the other forms of life on this planet. And they, if they stopped there, it would have been all right. But they went one step further and said that everything around you is created for your benefit. We are creating imbalance here. If what they say is uh, correct, I don't know, I can't make any definitive statements. When once you arrive at 16 billion or 15 billion population on this planet, we will all be wiped out. You see, because uh, the planet cannot take, you see, not only the destructive part on the human kind, but also the heat we are generating. If what they say is true, correct, every human body is radiating 3000 centigrade heat. We are heating up this planet. You understand? So human species is the last thing that is very essential on this planet. It's not that we I'm can do without human beings. Yes, then. we yeah. have not been on the scene for long. You see, you, just I don't know. I'm talking. This is supposed to be an interview. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Let me ask you. <laughs> you seem to be so fiery. Where does that come from? From the energy of the life that is there behind these words. I am not interested in winning anybody over. To my point of view. Mm. I have no point of is that Is that a fire of love or is no, that a fire that is not, of... No, the love is another four-lettered word. Okay, well, what is the fire then? Fire, the life is something extraordinary. It is so creative. And uh, it is emphasizing certain things uh, in such a way that it, sometimes people tell me that you are very angry. Why you use such a brutal language? No, just to emphasize, overemphasize a point. That it is the backing of the, the life, life's energy is something extraordinary. They yeah, don't understand. Does, does your fire, does your life, does your energy come from the life itself? Uh, from from life see, itself. But you have had some I'm major a, I'm just a dog here barking. And you are the one that is making this dog bark. And whatever is coming out is not uh, the product of any thinking, it's not born out of my thinking or any such thing. 
you are bringing out all this noise that is there inside of me and reading something into it making uh, some sense to you and others say that it doesn't make any sense but uh, well, what it, do, it doesn't have to make sense but where does it come Why, from you, something in your life you, you know, had a, a, a major may, experience may I point that out one thing there is no need for us to have not this particular interview or any other uh, conversation there is no need for us to have any conversation with anybody whether it is the near and dear ones or the beloved ones or the people around you the only reason why we want to carry on a conversation with others is to win them over to your point of view and make them accept what you are saying we I use logic agree. why 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 do you have to carry on any conversation because this is you life. and i go for a this, walk yes, you and i go life. for a walk and you see the beautiful and it's also a play play yes, yes. you want to win No, Always. it's not about. Ah, no, no, you can no play need. without winning. Yeah, where is the need for logic? I studied Western logic. I studied all this uh, shit in my uh, university. You see, but I, I, I never accepted any such thing. You see, logic. Where is the need for logic? You but know, is there a need for play? As a student of logic, uh, I denounced uh, logic completely and totally. I went one step further, and uh, said that. any day western logic is more logical than the indian logic as a student of uh, yeah. uh, psychology i studied and philosophy and logic and uh, why do we need logic you are more logical than i am you are more intelligent than i am what makes you think that you are more intelligent than i am well you log- have more verbiage us, uh, you have more verbiage more garbage more words in your uh, uh vocabulary sh- shit box i'm sorry to <laughs> you yeah. not you in, in particular yeah. then me so you use that you see to convince me and to win me over to your point of view and people uh, find it difficult to accept what i am saying in uh, all kinds of conversations or interviews they say that's your point of view all right that's my point of view what is yours your source is a point okay, of view but i am not interested in winning you over no no but i'm my really point of view i'm, I'm, I'm not referring to you no no but i'm just trying to Go to to enjoy <laughs> and 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 the thing that comes up to me you say well logic okay it has no role just causality has a uh, as as a concept yeah. work that there is cause and cons- effect it's a cause and effect uh, system is the most important thing for the human species because what you call thinking mechanism or thoughts or whatever you want to call are born out of cause and effect relationship you can not conceive the possibility of anything happening outside the field of cause and effect all right if you are finished with god and the belief that god created this world whether it is 6 days or 7 mm-hmm. days it really doesn't matter why are the scientists interested in finding out the cause the origin of the universe i want to know i am not interested you see why are these doctors interested in whatever they are doing i have never 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 seen a doctor for 50 years of my life i have never i never tell anybody not to go to a doctor i have never eaten touched anything recommended by any doctor i for a vegetarian i don't eat vegetables i don't eat fruits i don't eat anything they say is good for the body i have a tremendous faith in this body this is an extraordinary intelligent being unparalleled and you think you have some ideas how to control this body how to help this body how to improve this body how to make it live you see in a very healthy condition how to make it longer than it is programmed to live genetically or otherwise i really don't know that is why i say that shoot all the doctors on site and at sight they have done such an immense harm to mankind by telling them that they know a lot more about the human body than others do you see if somebody comes and asks me i have this problem i have uh, been advised to have uh, mm-hmm. some surgery some cancer go to the doctor i would never say even today i accept what the doctors have found out about the human body and i will not accept anything that is suggested by any religious man in the past or in the present so who, what who, they know who do you believe in uh, uh, belief is is a wrong word to use you see who do you appreciate uh, you see it must i must uh, uh, test the validity of whatever they are saying and if it, if it doesn't fit into this i reject it totally 
And you see, that when I was there in China, they also, I have been to China several times. And uh, the guy who was with me, he was a uh, professor of cultural studies in Beijing University. Yuji, we have succeeded in destroying every trace of Buddhism in this country. Even Mao Tse Tung doesn't mean a thing. The only place where they have his photo is where he was buried. And only a few old taxi drivers still have his photo on the dashboards of their taxis. But nobody... And what you are saying is undermining the very foundation of human thought, not just the religious thinking of man. So many scientists, nuclear physicists come to see me. So many brain physiologists come to see me. Psychologists come to see me. They don't have any way of winning me over to their point of view. They may say, you are a cynic, you are an iconoclast, you are this, you are that. You, so many words they have in their vocabulary. They use to describe me and fit me into that framework and feel so good about it. Okay. What do you like? Uh, what is what the, do you like? What life? do you mean? What I like, like this conversation, not with the idea of winning you over to my point of view, or, you see, make you understand uh, what I am saying. Mm -hmm. So, so see, I want to know what you like. I know, it's very nice. difficult, uh, very difficult to say. Do you what like uh, my, books? All my likes are... Good books, good no, paintings? Good, I'm illiterate. I don't see anything, you see. Anything of the past. I have never been to your museums here. You see, I'm not interested in anything we talk about the past. Whether they are the painters or the... the anything of the past, it doesn't interest me. If that is the... If what you have today is the result of that, I'm not interested in the past. I go to the shopping mall. Yesterday he dragged me to see a shopping mall there. There was only furniture, electric lamps and then you see, I don't know what it was. I was terribly, terribly disappointed with that. Mm -hmm. Why you go to the shopping malls? I don't take even walk, I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. You see, I don't eat anything they say is good for the body. I have survived, sir, 84 years. Mm -hmm. But is there like, do you like children? Better uh, than... Yes, I like the children most because we are, I see, the one problem that is facing us all today, this is what I tell all those people who start schools to help them to create an atmosphere of freedom and all that kind of a thing. They are born with some extraordinary intelligence. You see, we are no match to the children. I don't know you have any children. You see, but we want to force them to fit into the framework which we have created. But they have to be educated so that they cannot be misfits in this world. How to educate them and see that they are not misfits in this world without destroying the native intelligence, extraordinary sensitiveness they are born with. Yeah, but Nobody like, has come yeah, up with the, the Theosophical Society, but it has especially not, Rudolf Steiner has yeah, tried he has to not set up... He tried, but as he produced, Jagger Ramos, they also started so many schools. I knew him very well. I was brought up in the same atmosphere. His teachers were my teachers. We never got along well. So... Has anybody come out of your school? You know, when Annie Besant started, the Central Hindu College, which afterwards became uh, the university, Benares Hindu University, proclaimed to the wide world that she is going to produce the future leaders of India. Not one fellow came out of that university. My grandfather was a theosophist. He joined the Theosophical Society in uh, 1878 when they moved the Theosophical Society from New York to India. He contributed so much money for all her organizations, you see. Not one fellow came out of that school. And then they started the university for J. Krishnamurti. Let me UG, complete yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, no, they only distributed doctorates amongst themselves and closed that university. Mm -hmm. I am yet to see. You see, you know, I believe in... Uh, um, I don't believe in the possibility of creating... Teachers like Buddha, Jesus and all those people, they are all the products of our culture. They are cultural but products. But are there then teachers that we should look at? Or are we just to look at the farmers who plow the fields? They are more intelligent than us. I, I, I they know, are more, yes. You know them. They are yes, more intelligent they are than absolutely. us. Why I am the in beggars this, in the streets. They are, the, why is there one beggar there in these seats, I am asking. I am not going to start any organizations. You see, and all those people who create these institutions are exploiting them. You see, for example, I give the example of Mother Teresa. She started, you see, a wonderful organization. You are perpetuating the misery of those people by giving charity. Charity is the most vicious and vulgar thing invented by the religious man. 
you are perpetuating their misery but you are not solving that problem because we feel guilty that we have taken advantage of everything that the world can offer us and we have a way of protecting everything that we have stolen huh and but uh, by giving them charity maybe it is born out of the guilt complex on our part that we should help You know, and and the guilt part, uh, guilt complex is part yes, of the uh, of the control system. Yes, of certainly. You see, when uh, a friend of when um, Clinton, you see, visited India, and I sent a say, newspaper article that appeared in all the leading newspapers in the United States of America, saying 11 million people are underfed, underclothed, and most of them homeless. And why the hell they are talking about the human dignity and human? all that shit that they are talking about i want to know you see if, as long as there is one fellow there i am not impressed by your four freedoms at all i am not going to start an organization you see to because i am interested you see in taking their place that is what is happening everywhere in the world the moment they are in the seat of power they do exactly the same thing that they protested against condemned and fought against it does not mean that they should so you become what you fight huh you become what you, you are fight. only interested in taking their place but you will still continue to yeah, exploit but are there no good people there not even one good person if he was a good person if he is a good person if you think he is a good person he won't be interested in doing anything <laughs> i'm sorry so the true holy man the, the they true, are all, the true saints do nothing there uh, what, what do, I don't know what exactly you mean by saint. I don't know why these people are falling for all that kind of a shit. They, you see, there is a market. I've, a friend of mine oh, was okay. discussing about his future. He wants to be, you see, a holy man. You make money. I'll be happy. There is a market for that kind uh, of wait, a thing. Wait, wait. Let's forget why about not? holy mark men. Is there a thing like ethics? Is there a thing like morality? If Do I say, we have to live by certain rules? Anybody. who is moral if there is such a person as a moral person for him there is no such thing as morality and he would never condemn immorality i agree i agree and one agree. who has never uh, tasted even wine he will not condemn you see those people who drink one who has never smoked in his life will never condemn anybody and persuade him to give up smoking is this morning i was telling it's better to smoke than to eat potatoes tomatoes and uh, aubergines what you call them uh, eggplant in america see they have nicotine you see it's far more harmful than smoking and similarly if you eat the salads lettuce you see and all the other green stuff that they eat uh, has opium in that see they are all addictives i am not condemning that but why you condemn those people you see from smoking i want to give you an example of my friend who was uh, a smoker uh, all the time 24 hours is my friend uh, who is the famous director now he's a public man you see mahesh bhat and uh, he tried his best to give up smoking he, he was an alcoholic and i was even helping him you see with very expensive wine bottles bought from the military stores to the help of this guy Uh, who was a very important uh, spiritual man mm-hmm. and i i never asked him to give up smoking i never asked him to give up uh, drinking and he had a 6 month old baby and he picked up that baby and wanted to kiss the baby moved away from him on the spot he gave up drinking and smoking any action that is real action occurs at the moment You see, not tomorrow, not okay. the day after. Fine. Yeah. How do we get to the real action? How do we get to the point where what I have where, to say will not happen? What I have to say will not interest you. Will not interest your listeners, because all of our actions are born out of our thinking. They are all destructive. You see, the only action, if you want to call that action, quote and unquote, is the physical response to the stimulus. We 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 robots in that sense. We are robots. Gurdjieff said it. But he said we are If he stopped there, what? if he stopped there it would have been a wonderful thing. But he created institutions and created the mess. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, well, he said, you are 99.9% robots, but I'm trying to Why get the 1% out. Why not 100 You see, that's what I tell you. see, they told me that you are a millionaire and that you control the computers here, like uh, well, I, uh, that the famous fellow in America. But uh, this is what I tell those people. The moment you put selectivity and censorship in the computers, their usefulness will be finished because you will use them to control. A friend of mine, uh, has some peculiar name. I suggested that she should change her family name into a bitch. And she put it on the computer. Computer rejected it already. <laughs> it rhymes well with her name. So, uh, in exactly the same way, the, the computers are now, you see, having a heyday. They are doing so very well. But uh, the most important thing is how to avoid putting selectivity and censorship. That is the one that is the cause of human misery. Well, I, I agree because I think it's that the way course, computers yeah. work, yeah, but they, they are hypnotic and they, they force yeah, us thinking. Yeah, but you have tremendous faith in the computers. But when once you put them, you will also use them like the thinking mechanism which we have developed through centuries. So how are we going to stop that? You know? You see those people who are interested in uh, um, all the other experiments they are making, you see, and you are not going to create uh, Buddhas, Jesuses. They are all the products of the culture, cultural products. Unfortunately, they are placed before us as models and insisting that we should all be like them. But nature is not interested in uh, that kind of a thing. It is perfecting the species. I even question the evolution, theory of evolution. When the, the process slows down, you see, there is what they call a mutation occurs. And the result of that mutation is not uh, in any way related to what was there before. You cannot compare. And every time, you see, not that there is any plan or any uh, evolution there, you see, controlling the, the, the progress of the, the species on this planet, it doesn't use anything as a model nature. You see, when once it is perfected... But does it maybe conform to some kind of what uh, Rupert Sheldon calls morphogenetic field of... You see, of the genetic being. engineering is going to succeed in uh, turning out all women, prettiest girls on this planet, all men, the most handsome people, but all your movie stars will be out of business. They cannot create actresses. Physical features can be perfected. It may not happen in our lifetime, but it will take some but time. But you don't think that character... Uh, character is a cultural input there. You yeah. cannot change that by... Uh, not at all. That is the result of human suffering. You see, we have to live in misery and die in misery. I'm sorry, it, is, it sounds very pessimistic. But I, I, I find it... It says in Enigma, I find it strange that a man with such zeal, with such fire, says... He's focusing, spotlighting uh, on the, the situation exactly the way it is. And it is very comforting for people to put this label on me. He's a cynic, he's an iconoclast, he's an atheist. This is what I tell the people, you see. If you are finished with God, you will not become an atheist. You are still related to God. You still want to free people mm -hmm. from their belief in God. When once you are finished with God, you are not interested in freeing the people from their belief in God. So he is no different. He creates organizations, collects mm -hmm. money, creates yeah. institutions. But where does the spark come from? What spark? Your spark. You, you are translating what is coming out of me as something, uh, what is the word here? Spark. Spark. And uh, I don't uh, see any sparks here. A, a fire. Uh, no fire, no spark. I don't see any. I'm just uh, uh, something coming out. I don't even know what I'm saying. It may sound as funny to you, you know. You're smiling. That's, uh, that's hurting, I'm me. Smiling because hurting me. Hurting <laughs> me. <laughs> okay. No, no, Yuji, yes, sir. Krishnamurti. Uh, yes. We talked about many things. and uh, I covered the whole, yes? whole planet. The whole planet. <laughs> and uh, I'm still amazed because... Uh, I think you're a positive man. Positive? Yes. Oh, the name. Oh, my God. And, um, so this so is what I emphasize. You see, let me complete this. Okay, you, but sometimes we need you a devil use, to you see use, I'm a devil. Somebody said the devil is in town. Mm -hmm. You see, 
they when they fail to achieve their goals in the positive they, way already two on one table now that's bad that's they, bad. when they when they achieve to when they fail to achieve their goals in the positive way they invented a thing called the negative approach but the goal is a positive goal it doesn't matter whether you approach to attain your goal positive goal through the positive way or the negative way the via negativa i was called in mysticism in mysticism is a very clever way cunning clever crafty ways Of the um, people of achieving in the end the same positive. Yes, same positive. Okay. The goal is a positive goal. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. UG Krishnamurti, thank you for being here. And uh, beste mensen, we hebben gesproken over allerlei zaken in de hele wereld. En misschien heeft u kunnen volgen. Misschien niet. In ieder geval een iemand die uh, we heel graag op Kleurnet uh, een keer uh, wilde interviewen. Want een van de raadsels van deze wereld, iemand die kritiek heeft op alles en toch blij en vurig hier komt om daarover te praten. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye bye.